Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. My name's Dale. I've got an interesting repair job here. It is an air gun where the end, the threaded end, has broke off and it needs to, of course, be repaired. Now, I'm showing you this video to show you the different challenges in turning down tubing and threading it. As you can see here, this is a very fine thread. It's actually, uh, the thread pitch is 32. And it's got its challenges to thread something that fine on such a large diameter. This is three quarter inch aluminum stock. I wanna teach you the challenges that go on with turning aluminum, especially tubing like this that's thin wall. So if you look at tubing, its biggest challenge is it's very flexible and can go in any direction. If we were to, let's say, hold this in a three jaw chuck, well, what happens is we get three points and we end up just making a triangle and that's not going to be round and with this fine pitch thread if we're off too much it's not going to be a good fit if i go on with the square if i go on the four jaw chuck it's going to basically turn this into a square so you realize that clamping down onto aluminum is very challenging so what we're going to do is we're going to go in and use a collet and this one here is a 2j collet and what's great about a collet is when it tightens down on the material, it tightens down equally on all sides of it. So let me get this installed. I'm going to let this tubing hang out a little bit further than I normally would. And the reason for that is for camera angles. With aluminum, or any type of tubing, it can always be off and out of round. So we need to first check it to see how it is. And we're just going to simply come in here with a dial. Let's check how it is. Okay, so this is a, a one thousandth indicator, 0 .001 and it's about two thousandths out. That's not bad, that's very usable, but let's say if it was out further than that, how do you correct it? Well, I wanna show you that. First thing what we wanna do is we're gonna lightly run a file over the top of it just to clean it up. And I wanted to just get the high points off and that probably brought it in within tolerance just by filing it. But let's say if it was squished and a little out of round. What we can do is go in with a ball bearing like this. It's very similar to metal spinning. If you've never sp seen metal spinning, you want to go do a search on it on YouTube and see what it is. But hold on, wait until I'm done doing this video first. So it's simply what you want to do is just Put a bearing on a shaft like this. Bring it in. Now, I would normally square up the bearing, but to save time, I'm not going to do that. And we're in pretty good. And we want to, of course, get the bearing approximately in center with the tubing, but it really doesn't matter. And you would just simply turn on the lathe and as it's going around and it's oblong, this will pick up and hit those high spots and start pushing it back in and back into place. If your tubing's really far out, it may not work, but it's also one of those tricks you have to try it and find out first. Let me put the cutter back in. Now I've already set up the cutter for this and it's an insert. And what's great about insert, especially for something like this, is it's ground to a very fine point, something that I don't think I really have. Well, I could do it, but it's a lot of work and it's just easier to go with an insert that has an accurately ground fine point to it. Now, I'm not gonna go over this whole transmission and how to set it up. It's a little complicated. And since a lot of people don't have a lathe like this, I don't think you're gonna really benefit. 
And that's not the goal of this video is to show you how to thread, but how to think about threading an aluminum tube like this. So we're going to bring this around. We're going to set a zero. When I set up for zero here, I make sure the handle is top dead center. And the reason I do that is I know exactly where it is when I'm turning it. So when I bring it down, I just know I have to bring this up to top and look for zero. Boom, I'm done. Very quick and easy. Now we're going to set up here for a scratch pass. I've already set the compound to around 30 degrees. So I'm going to come in here, just kind of twist it around. I hear it scratch, and there we go. Set this dial to zero. And come out. Now our first pass we're going to do is what we call as a scratch pass. And that's to make sure we have the transmission or your gearbox set up correctly. So with this pitch gauge, I'm going to check to make sure we're lined up. Pretty good. Now, if I didn't have a pitch gauge, I can go in with some material that's already been cut, or you guys are going to like this. You can actually just go in with a tap and check it with that as long as it's a tap with a 32 pitch. I'm going to back off the main cross slide, bring it over, bring the cross cross slide back to zero, again with this handle on top. And when I engage here on this dial, what's great about even numbers, any notch on that dial I can connect to. It doesn't matter if it's a one, two, or four, or three, or any of the half notches because it is an even number thread. I'm going to go in five thousandths for each cut. Now if you'll notice, I tapered coming out because I don't want a weak spot on the, on the uh, threads like there was before. So this at this point, I want to come in with a micrometer, and this is a threading micrometer. Very cool, very easy to use compared to using the wire system. And the wire system is you set up three wires, and you measure the distances between the wires, and then do a calculation, and blah, 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 blah. Bottom line is, it takes a lot of time. Here, I can just come in. The hardest thing I have to do is get it lined up square and into the right threads and the right grooves. So the measurement that I am after is 0.725. And we have about 13,000 more to go. Make sure this one's at zero. Come into here, said 13. Let's go another 5,000 here, test it. I know people think that threading is rocket science, and really the only way to know how to do threading is to practice. Literally, I don't care if you don't have a project to work on, just start, just get some material out and practice. Find out how everything works and just keep doing it, and the day that you need to do it, you'll be ready to go. Let's do another measurement. So it looks like I have another five thousandths to go, but before I do that, let's test the handle and make sure it doesn't thread on. So 
little tight, I think what we'll do is go for a scratch pass. And a scratch pass is literally letting, going back to your original settings, your last cut, and just let it pass through and clean it up. a very heavy scratch pass. I think we might be there. Let's clean up with a wire brush. Taper the end. Done. I think that is a really great repair. Some of the surprise on this were how much the scratch pass took off each time. And I think I know what's going on here. This lathe is really ready for a full teardown and rebuild on the compound slides. And I think I'm going to have to do a video on that. I think it'll be very interesting to show you what I do to a lathe to actually get up and running. Because the only thing I've done with this lathe since I bought it was make sure that it's dead on level. But I can see that the challenges I was having here, that it was off a little bit. And I think it's important for you to see that even a big machine like this can be not working correctly. And I think it's great for you guys to see a machine that isn't cutting 100% correct. So I'm going to work on setting up a video for you guys to show you how to set up a lathe. And i sorry, it's going to be a long video, so it's going to probably be broken up into multiple parts. But this is how you turn down tubing. Remember, you want to make sure that when it's clamped down that it stays round and that's the real key. So if you guys like this type of video, give me some thumbs up. Also, give me some of your great comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. And also, I want to back up just a second, is I've been producing a video on Wednesday that I call Q&A and it's usually based on what video like this one here is done on Friday. Next Wednesday, I'll have a Q&A for this turning. So if you've got any questions, please leave a comment. I'll hopefully get to read it on Q&A. All right, guys. Till next time, go out in your shop and build something cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm.